Okay. So this is the introduction to digital logics. Let me just and again, all these slides are online at that website. Um, so to begin with, you have to understand what is the difference between analog and digital. Um, so analog, which is what you'd be dealing with in the, the other introduction to electronics course, and analog circuits, it's where the value can be anything. So um, you have an infinite number of possible values here. So here we have a sine wave. And it can be, you know, it can be zero volts, it can be 1.2, 1.1, 2, uh, whatever value you want. And in theory, it can take an infinite number depending how many decimal places you take it to. Digital just means it's discrete value. So in this waveform, in time, we're saying that what we consider its value is only of several possibilities. So here I actually have three possibilities. Um, so here it could be zero. It could be this positive voltage here, or it could be this negative voltage here, but it's never, it's never in between. This, this state doesn't exist, we're claiming. So we're saying there's only those possibilities. And where digital comes about is literally digits, um, meaning fingers. And if you're counting with your fingers, you only have 10, assuming you have 10 fingers, only 10 possible uh, units that you can count up to or through. You're either zero or you're one. There's no, no one uses half, really. Um, so digital is very old. It's, I mean, the abacus is an example of a digital. It's either, you know, on this side or on that side. The in-between states mean nothing. Um, same with Braille is effectively a digital system. There's only certain values you can take. Um, so a subset of digital is what we call binary. So binary is only two states. Um, so the two states we use will either be, there'll be different names for them, but if we imagine a switch with a light bulb, the switch is either off or it's on, and that's it. So you can see the light bulb's off there, on there. Other names we'll give it, uh, we might call low, we might call it false when we're dealing more with the Boolean algebra. False and true, um, zero and one, so zero being this off state, one being on, and low and high are other names we'll give it. But at the end of the day, it's all the same stuff, and all these four effectively mean the same thing as these four. Um, one thing that then you should be able to read into this is how we deal with binary waveforms in time. So you're probably used to seeing a sine wave moving in time um, along that axis and the value along this axis. But instead with binary, it's only two possible states, one and zero. So again, we have time going this way, um, except here the only possible states are if it's at this, it's one. If it's at this, it's zero. Um, so you can still say at time, you know, t equals whatever, t equals zero, it's one. At t equals one, it's zero. Uh, t equals two, et cetera, et cetera. So we still have the idea of time in binary, but at any point in time, there's only two possibilities for this value to be one and zero. Um, so these are just sort of alternate ways of looking at this same information that the circuit goes to one, the zero stays one, stays one. Um, and the top one's just a waveform version of it. So what we'll need to think about then is how we use binary and why we care about binary. And the reason we care about binary is because we can manipulate it easily with something called gates. Um, and gates, as we have here, are basically just this magic hat. And you put in something, and you get out something else. Um, in this case, we put in binary data. So we put in, you know, we put in a logic high, we're going to say. You can just arbitrarily give it. And you put in something else, say a zero, and you get some output. And you can put in different values, and you'll get a different output. Um, so how we know what's going to happen is we use... We use what's called a truth table. So for any particular gate, and we'll give it a name to the magic that's happening, say an OR gate, 
Um, and we'll say that when either of those inputs is one or high or true, the output is always true. Um, so if we had zero, zero going in, we'd get zero. But as long as one of those is high, um, the output will be high. So if the other one's high, if this is one and that's zero, then it's still one. So this logic we call an OR gate, and we write it down in a truth table. Um, so here we just say for each input, every possibility, we give what the output is. So if the input is zero, zero, the output is zero. Um, if one of the inputs is one, or both of them, the output's always one in this case. Um, so the name we give that is OR, because if one or the other is one, the output's one. And you can think of that, if you're building the circuit physically, it might look something like this. So we have two switches. If one of those switches is closed, power will flow and light up the bulb. So if that one's closed, power flows, lights up the bulb. That one's closed. And if they're both closed, it still lights up. So that's physically how you might build an OR gate. Um, so when I show a representation of it, I'm going to be showing three well, four things really now. Uh, we'll have a symbol here. Um, and this is on schematics, how we're going to show what an OR gate looks like. Um, so we have two inputs to it, A and B. And again, this is what we were showing here. I'd call this one A and this one B. Um, two inputs and one output. So in time, we have zero, zero, and zero. And this is shown on the waveform at this point. So we have zero, zero, and the output is zero. So that's here. Um, again, the, the next point, zero, one, one for the OR gate is shown at this point in time. So we have zero there, there's one, and the output's one. Um, and you can read through that. You know, your input's one, oops, one, zero, and the output's one. And that's that line in it. Um, so throughout the course, you'll sort of see all, all of these representations being used. You'll see the waveform style, and you'll see the truth table. So it's good to be familiar with um, all of them. And this final piece of information is the equation for it. Um, so here the plus symbol is actually meaning or. So in this class, for the most part, uh, we're going to be dealing with what's called Boolean algebra. And Boolean algebra is just a way, another way of writing down all the same information. Um, so you can either write this symbol that says it's an or gate uh, when A is 1 or B is 1, the output's 1. This way is saying when A or B is true, the output's true. So the OR gate's just one of several sort of basic entities we have. The next one um, is the AND gate. And the AND gate's output is high only when A and B are one. Um, so again, we have the same input waveform as before, except for the output, the only state where the output is one, I should say, um, is this final entry here. So the output's one only when both inputs are one. Uh, so using Boolean algebra, we have the output y is a and b, and y is true only if a and b are both true. Um, so that's another of the basic gates. Sort of the final one of the three very basic gates we'll talk about is the NOT gate. Um, and the NOT gate, the output is simply the inverse of the input. So when the input's zero, the output goes to one. When the input's one, the output goes to zero. So Y is NOT A, basically. Um, and so here, we show this by just putting a line over it. So if we put a line over something, it means the inverse of the... The output is the inverse of the input. Um, so let me show you an example, 
and this is getting a little closer to stuff you'll actually be doing or see on the assignments at least. Um, if we have this circuit and we want to know what is the output um, of the circuit based on the input. So this is something maybe I'll give you a few minutes to draw it down and think about it. Um, and basically try to fill in this final table here. So based on what I've given you, so for each of these gates, the inputs and outputs, so the AND gate, the NOT gate, and the OR gate, what is the final output at Y? And, uh, yeah, in the end you will end up with that. The example I made was four, but... Yeah, so when you're doing these, um, in general, I mean, if you can either sort of look at it and try to analyze how it might work, but you can just go through is the recommended way um, in that it's a simple procedure. So if we have A and B of zero, you can put A to zero, B to zero, um, and the output of the AND gate, zero, zero to the AND gate, zero goes there. Um, so there's a zero to the input, one input of the OR gate, and the NOT gate will invert this and give you a one, one zero, so the output's one. Um, and then you can just go through for each other option. So I'll just erase all this. Um, so again, the next one is zero, 01, so you can just write 0, 01. Um, the truth table for the AND gate, the output is 0. Go through the NOT gate, 0, 01, and you end up with the same thing, 1, 0. So it's 1. Um, if we put a 1 here, this next line, 0 here, the output's still 0, 0, 01. This gets inverted to 1, um, 1, 0. And again, the output's 1. Finally, if we have 1 and 1, um, so 1, 1 there, the output here of the AND gate, so you go to this line, will be 1. Um, the 1 goes through the NOT gate, becomes a 0, 0 here, and this 1 goes down, um, and the output again is 1. So in this case, the output for all states is 1. So it's a very, very simple example. But you can follow that same procedure for more complicated circuits. Um, so you can also directly write the Boolean function. And so the Boolean function is using these. So using y equals not a, y equals a and b, y equals a or b. And... Um, to do this, you again, you just kind of look through it very slowly. And so, for example, we have A and B. Um, so that's the output there. And this output gets split two ways. So one way is going to be ORed, and one way is knotted. So we'll knot that. So this point here is A and B inversed. Um, and this point here is just A and B without the inverse. Uh, so then all we have to do is apply an OR to this. So that's so when we write this out, we can say A and B inverse or with A and B. And you can put brackets around it if you want it. Um, and finally, you just have Y equals. Um, yeah, so the order of operations, we'll go through in a lot more detail, but you can think of it in the same way. The, the AND will have higher precedence than the OR. But um, I think for the most part, 
I'll always try to put brackets around it to make it obvious for now. Um, so yeah, it's just the same thing that's showing the final result. Um, one note, now we'll build slightly more complicated gates. When we have the AND gate followed by a NOT gate, we'll effectively simplify that. Um, and you notice that little circle gets collapsed down. And we'll just have that circle at the end. And that circle simply means it's inversed. Um, so this means if this is y and b, y equals the same as before, inverse. You sometimes will see circles in other spots of the circuit. Um, so for example, you may see a gate looks like this. And again, all you have to think about is that is equivalent to this not gate, that circle there. So all that means is that is equivalent to same AND gate um, with a NOT gate added there, which would mean Y equals A AND, and then B, just B is inverted. Uh, so as promised, this is creatively named the NOT AND gate, or the NAND gate. Um, so Y, as I said, is equal to A and B inverse. So the truth table is just the opposite of for the AND gate. So the output is 1, as long as both inputs are not the same. In a similar way, we'll see the NOT OR gate, or the NOR gate. So the NOT OR gate is in the same way as before, just the output here is inverse from the OR gate. Um, so what you will find is that as long as the inputs are zero, the output's one. If either input is one, the output is zero. Fairly straightforward. So an interesting point here is that I've shown a few different gates and that we can actually make, and this will be, I think, one of your first assignment questions, is using only one type of gate to make any other operation you want. And you can, in fact, just use NAND gates or just use NOR gates and do everything with them. Um, so as an example, we'll compare, say we want to make an OR gate, and all we have is an infinite supply of NAND gates. So you can look at the truth table, uh, is how you do it. So we say with the OR gate, it's 0, 1, 1, 1. And with the NAND gate, it's 1, 1, 1, 0. So what you notice is that the output here is just the inverse of this. Um, so we can say, OK, well, the OR gate will be equal to the NAND gate if we just invert this output. Or input, sorry, not the, not the output, the inputs. Um, screwed you up. Let me do that again. So if we, if we invert the inputs, we'll get the correct response. 